Hi, welcome to another video. So, ChatGPT has launched its Canvas feature. It's like a competitor to Claude's artifacts, but it turns out to be quite different. It doesn't preview stuff. Instead, it opens up a kind of code editor in your browser, which is pretty amazing, but not so amazing at the same time. Because how can you see if the code is running when you can't preview it? It's a bit of a hassle. I already covered this in a previous video that I created right after its launch. But, at that time, I didn't have access because they were rolling it out, and I immediately jumped on it and created the video. Now that it's fully rolled out, the Canvas feature is showing up in my account and should be showing up in yours too. So, let's try it out as well. The first thing you'll notice when you come to chat GPT is the general options, along with a canvas option here. So, let's choose it. Now, let's try to create something and see how well it performs. We'll try to make something useful with it, but first, before we test it with coding, let's try it with simple text, because apparently, it also works when you ask it to write simple text. Let's ask it to write a simple blog post about why Rust is better than C. If we send it over here, you can see that it has this very smooth animation as it goes into canvas mode. Now, you can see that on the left, I have the chat interface, while on the right, I have the canvas interface. Now, since it's in writing mode, you'll see these options on the bottom right. These options will be different when you use it for coding. Anyway, here we have the Suggest Edits option, Adjust Length option, Reading Level option, Add Final Polish option, as well as the Add Emojis option. Let's use the Add Emojis option here. Now you can see what it's doing. One thing I have to say is that OpenAI is putting a lot of effort into small animations, like the O1 preview thinking thing, and now this. It looks extremely cool and smooth. For sure. Anyway, now you can see it's changed the text and added emojis, which looks pretty good. You'll also notice that it gets added to your chat thread, which is great. But one thing you can also do is select some text here, and it'll give you the option to ask ChatGPT to fix it. If we click on it, you'll see that it opens up a simple inline assist feature. Let's ask it to make this text smaller and more concise. Let's send it. Okay, as you can see, it's working on it, and it's done. So, this looks pretty good. It also gets added to the thread, which is great. Now, these are the general options you have here. But you can also do something else. You can ask it to do something in simple text in the chat interface, and it will do that. So. Let's ask it to convert this into a funny tone. If we send it here, you'll see that it's editing, and you can watch it change things on the canvas, which is pretty amazing. If we wait just a bit here, you can see that it works pretty well. So, this is also great for sure. Basically, it's much more interactive now. Now that's the basic blog post and text stuff you can do with this. But now, let's try the real stuff which is coding with this new option. So, let's start with some simple things. Let's ask it to write an API server in Rust. Now you can see that it has written the API server here with Axum, but let's say I didn't want to write it in Rust. What we can do is go over here, and we'll get a bunch of options. The first option is the code review option which basically checks the code and adds comments on how you can optimize it. Then you can apply those changes. Apart from this, there's the port to language option, where you can select any other language from the slider and change it to that programming language. This only has a set list of languages, so if you want to convert it to some other language, you'll need to send that in the chat interface. Anyway, after this, there's the Fix Bugs option, which will check for bugs and fix them. 
Apart from this, there's the Add Logs option, which will basically add print commands at each step so that you can see where an error is happening or something like that for debugging. Then there's the Add Comments option, which will add comments to each line for better understanding of the code. Apart from this, you can also select a chunk of code and ask ChatGPT to fix or edit something in that chunk, which is a great option as well. Now, we haven't used the code review option yet, so if I click it here, you can see that it goes through the code line by line. If we wait a bit, you can see that it has added these comments. We can now ask it to apply these changes by clicking the Apply button. If we do that, it starts rewriting the code, which is great. So, this is a pretty cool option as well. Apart from this, we can also port the language to something like Python. So, let's select that over here. It's doing it now. And it's done. So, this is also a good option. You can also ask the chat interface to do something in the code, which is useful if you want to change something that isn't directly available in the tools. But we also need to use it to build something that we can test. So I got this design from Dribble. Let's send it this design and ask it to recreate it in Canvas. I'm using it to recreate it in HTML, CSS, and JS, so we can test it quickly. Anyway, it's generating the code over here. Let's wait just a bit. And it's done. So, this is the code it has given. Let's preview it and see. Okay, it still has some issues. So, let's just go over here and ask it to do a code review on this. It's doing it now. If we wait a bit, you can see that it has added some reviews. Let's apply everything it suggested. Okay, it's now done. Now let's preview this fixed version of the code. Hmm, this isn't very different from the original, but it has better margin and padding. Now let's send the same image again and ask it to make it more like the design. Okay, it's doing that now. Let's wait a bit here. And it's done. Let's copy this code and preview it. Okay, this looks pretty good now. It has the features we wanted for sure. Let me do a little bit more work over here. By the way, I'll be posting some more videos trying to build a full, usable app with the new OpenAI real-time voice feature using Canvas over in the members section of my channel. So, if you want to see that, make sure you join the membership. You'll get some great videos that I post regularly over there. It starts from just $5 a month. Anyway, this is the final thing I was able to make. Looks pretty good for sure. It's usable and works well. So, this is definitely a great option for building stuff. I believe it's only missing a preview feature. Maybe they could integrate something like GitHub Code Spaces to give it a preview, as well as a repo sync feature which would be pretty awesome and make it more of a full-fledged AI editor. So, I think this is definitely a great option to try out, and it has its own use cases for sure. I like this launch much more than the O1 because this can actually do something useful that others aren't able to do. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the Super Thanks option below. Or you can also consider becoming a member by clicking the Join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.